Good morning, everyone. This is V Team All Stars feature presentation. And today our speaker is Leticia Stieg. The name of your business is Macy Meerkat Studios. The number of years you've been in business is uh, one and a bit, one and a half. The location of your business is, and where do you serve? I'm based in Surrey, British Columbia, but I'm able to serve customers worldwide. Other organizations you belong to are? The Arts Council of Surrey, uh, Langley Arts Council, uh, Crofters of BC, um, BC Arts, quite a few, uh, B Team. And I'm going to plug, Lucia Stieg is a director on the board for the Fort Langley Arts, uh, Jazz and Arts Festival that we work together on that. The city that you reside in is? Surrey, British Columbia. And the city that you resided in before you came to Canada is? It was called Benoni and it's east of Johannesburg. Your family? In the heartland of South Africa. And your family includes, including fur babies? <laughs> Myself and my husband um, and our three fur babies. Two dogs and one demon cat. Ooh, your hobbies include? Reading and walking. I can't say art. <laughs> if, so you're, if you're a friend of Lucia's, you got to catch her out in nature. Her photography is amazing. I'm just plugging you. Something you would love to do is? Oh, well, there's so many things. Um, but top of my list... There's two things, either the Great Bear Rainforest or the train across Canada. I'm just not sure which one first. Probably the Great Bear Rainforest. And the root of your success is? Resilience. And at this time, Lucci is given 10 minutes to present. We encourage all our members to do an eight minute presentation. So we have two minutes at the end for us to answer any questions. Take it away. Okay, everyone can see this, I hope. Right, so today's talk um, is how to cope with fake reviews. It's something that I'm looking at in my own business um, as I will be pivoting, you know, most of my business activities online. And once you put yourself out there and the more you put yourself out there, you start to get, um, you know, you, you can run across people that can make your life extremely difficult. So sorry, I just want to check. You can all see my presentation, the slides. Absolutely. And the other topic I'm going to touch briefly on, because 10 minutes is not enough time, is toxic social media. So I'm going to share two links and you can go and look at that yourselves. It all ties in. So the five ways, this is in my own research and something that I'm doing for myself. So when you get a negative review, um, keep calm. Don't respond immediately and don't panic. It, it angers a person, you have an emotional reaction, but do not respond at that time. You know, it leads to poor judgment. You end up in a, in a situation that, you know, you could maybe have handled a little better. Investigate if this person has actually done business with you. You know, um, I'm going to bring up the Surrey Animal Hospital as an example. It's been in the news lately. Um, a woman did a, a negative review on TikTok about, you know, and, and posted quite an emotive video. And what had happened is a lot of her followers that had never done, you know, gone to the Surrey Animal Clinic, despite its previous problems, and left a whole bunch of, of, of false reviews or, or, you know, a bunch of one-star reviews based on this TikTok video. She is now being sued. So it's going to be interesting to see how this actually plays out in court because the law has not quite kept up with social media. And, and what's been happening. So, you know, that's going to be interesting to, to watch. So by all means, counter inaccurate reviews. If this person has not done business with you, you can counter it straight away and always be transparent in the way that you're doing it. You can try and report the views to the platform that you're on. Google is notoriously bad for not taking down fake reviews, um, you know, but that doesn't stop you from actually giving it a shot and seeing you know, if you can get taken it down. 
until the law starts catching up with, with you know, social media and, and, and online, we're going to sit with a situation as business owners where we are vulnerable to any form of attack. Uh, respond publicly where possible. So a good one to say is we checked our records and have no record of you visiting our business or dealing with our business. So if they are lying about the experience, politely and professionally respond with what happened. It also helps, you know, when, when, a, when people looking at those reviews on Google, they see your response in that way, it will help you to, they, you know, usually people discount that when they say, oh, oh fake review. Okay, we get it. Um, be very polite with your response. Doesn't matter how seething you are, how angry you are. I know how I'd feel if someone attacked my business. I put in a lot of work. So all of you are exactly the same. You all put a lot of work. You have a lot of dedication to your business. Language and context in, in what you say and do is really everything. Um, try and attract more positive reviews. Um, be very proactive about your online reputation. Jeanette preaches about this all the time. She teaches us how to manage our relationships. Lisa also is in that sphere. So the more positive reviews that you are able to garner, when someone comes and leaves a negative review, especially a fake one, you know, then people don't take notice of that review because, you know, your, the bulk of your reviews are good reviews. So therefore, it's really important to get as many reviews as possible. So when one of your, your members or, you know, business partners or anything asks to, for you to do a review, please do it. It really helps on the, on the Google rankings and it really helps, you know, it's sort of a counter a way of, you know, helping each other. Sort of like having Instagram followers, you know, it just, it just helps you a little bit more. Um, please leave those reviews, especially if you've dealt with that business. It's just a, it's a good way to help them in the case of an attack like this. So in summary, it's like keep it professional. Don't let your emotions get the better of you. Keep it short and concise, something I'm practicing really hard at the moment is to like, I tend to type a thesis. So I'm trying to shorten that to as few words as possible. Try and take your, your beef off the platform. So if the reviewer is a genuine customers of yours, just respond with something like, we are sorry that you had a bad experience. Please email us at da 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 so that we can resolve your issue. And this shows other people looking at this review that you're serious as a business and you want to, you know, uh, help that customer resolve their problems. Apologize if they had a bad experience, but don't admit to poor service. So again, this is where language and context comes in really, you know, um, comes into play. So we are sorry that you are not satisfied with our service as opposed to we are sorry we provided poor customer services. Now, I know in, in my sort of sphere of small businesses, artists, crafters, there's that, always that knee-jerk reaction. The minute you get a bad review, the minute someone says something negative, it's like, give them free stuff. And, you know, we're so sorry we, we, we did it. No, that's not always the case. Um, and we need to get away from that knee-jerk reaction, especially in, in my line of just giving out free stuff and, and apologizing for poor service when it really wasn't. And, you know, that subtle difference in the language that we use makes quite a lot of difference. And if that review is blatantly false, point it out. You are absolutely allowed to do that and should do that. And sometimes it can help to demonstrate that the reviewer is a serial complainer. You get those people that just go out there, they like to make your life a misery, they don't like your face, so they'll go and leave negative reviews everywhere or on anyone that they don't like. Don't attack them personally, despite the fact that you may want to, but recount what happened to show that the people that look that are looking at your reviews, that you that the review is not being reasonable. So call them out in a way that doesn't reflect poorly on your business. Um, now, the seven reasons, just very briefly, I'm going to touch on this and I'll drop the links of these two articles. Very informative, especially if you have children um, and grandchildren coming into to the internet age. It's, it's incredibly important. So the more social media platforms have expanded, the less happier we are. Our mental health is has really been impacted, especially the youth. I'm taking a social media break at the moment. I'm doing a bit of a social media detox. I just get really angry with what's going on and it tends to come across in my Facebook postings. Um, so 
insane. So I'm taking a bit of a step back, a little bit of a detox, thinking about how I want to address my, my social media going forward. And I will now train the algorithm. TikTok is the worst for that kind of thing. But I'm going to mess with that algorithm as much as possible. So I can adjust it. So I get to see cute dogs dancing around in feather, you know, things and little chihuahuas and things that make me happy versus seeing all this negativity around absolutely everything. I mean, it's, it's gotten ridiculous. So it's unlikely we're going to, social media is going to grow. It's unlikely to disappear from our lives anytime soon. And that is why it's beneficial to really understand how and why and what the platforms are, what they stand for and how they can be toxic and to detox ourselves from that effect. So I'm going to link these two links for you. Go read the articles attached. It's really quite interesting. We're all business owners um, and we all need to take a step back. I know, Jeanette, your business is around, you know, social media, but this is something that's to be considered, especially with a new generation, what they call alpha. I hate that freaking word because, you know, it's, Alpha this and beta this and what you know all this nonsense that goes on, but they are starting by 2023. The first crop of of alpha, the alpha generation, is going to be out there with social media. So you teaching the youngsters about how to use social media responsibly is absolutely perfect and on point. So thank you very much for your time, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you so much. I'm going to go back to gallery view here. We have time um, for one question, and I have one statement. And I posted yesterday on Facebook a very unique part of my Twitter feed that came up yesterday. Because what I put out there is good. I happened to get the um, Dalai Lama, the secret and motivational quote, all in an order when I turned on my Twitter. So why did that happen? It's because what I put out there leverage that kind of attraction coming back to me. So um, great, uh, fantastic presentation, Lucha. We do have time for one question. One question, one question. Anybody have a question for Lucia? Please go ahead, Gail. Lucia, um, how, do you how do you know when you're talking about this false people or you've used or how do you know they're false? And not just a nasty person. To know that your review is fake. Is that what you what you ask him? Yes. So you have and record. It's fake. Well, you have record of who you do business with. So okay. when you go and look at that review and you look at that person, you'll be able to track in your business records. That's why it's don't panic. The first thing is never panic. Go and actually do a bit of investigation and see if that is a genuine customer of yours. The fake review comes in when you have never done business with that person. Then it's a fake review. Because that person okay. is just being a yes and leaving you a fake review because they don't like you. It could also be a competitor in business. And I've had this personal experience in my previous job as a product manager with Federal Mogul that our opposition in South Africa actually went around bad-mouthing us to customers and leaving fake reviews everywhere on forums. It is the shittiest way to do business ever. But unfortunately, people are people, and you will fa face this. So if that person has not done a business with you, that's a fake review. Okay. Thank Perfect. you. Great question. You can also um, read the review out loud. That is something else to understand tone, to know that fake reviews as well. There's there's a tonality in the use of, of adjectives, adverbs, and verbs that you can kind of get a feeling, and this is where there's a platform that begins with a Y, um, that a lot of times you have to be careful. It's a review platform that um, people go out and will just do reverse, and it, it's, it's the tonality. So I encourage you all, if you get a review, to read it out loud. So put some tone behind it, and you can, uh, you can tell about the review. So thank you. Oh, go ahead, Lucia, to wrap this up. I just, I just want to say, you also get bots on some of the yeah. social media. You actually get bots that it's, it's an automated thing. They've, they send bots out there to make lots of comments. The, the, on social media, a good way to spot them is there's no profile picture. You know, there's usually no history. Always click on that picture and do a lot of digging. Yeah. Um, I should have been an investigator, I think, a private <laughs> investigator at that, because I'm good at digging up 
all sorts of things about people, um, especially on social media. Going back to this is how they hack you. They socially engineer you. Mm -hmm. So whatever you put out there and the more we put ourselves out there because we're trying to get business, you know, so the more vulnerable you become to these kind of things. So, you know, the bots, you, you start checking these bots because they can really mess with your life. Absolutely. Thank you so much.